be okay now. Board of Education has been in closed executive session to conduct employee discipline hearings and to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, and dismissal of specific employees of the public body and discussion of collective bargaining matters between the board and its representatives. No action was taken during this closed executive session. I would now ask everyone to join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have a recommendation for tonight's agenda? Oh, I almost forgot the most important part of the meeting, to welcome our student ambassadors. Do we have a report tonight? We're still waiting on one individual, so. And that's when awesome. she comes back, we can come, when she gets here, we can uh -huh. come back to her. Yeah. You're getting a break for a little while, not very long now. <laughs> now, do we have a recommendation for tonight's agenda? Yes, we do. I recommend the board approve tonight's May 23rd, 2023 open session board meeting agenda as presented. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. And your student ambassador is here, Bill. Oh. Okay. Let's just, let's go ahead and finish this, and then we'll come right back to our student ambassadors. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Now. Let's back up to our student ambassadors and welcome our student ambassadors from Eisenhower High School. And do you have something for us this evening or some comments? <laughs> um, so next Tuesday, we planned a field day with a couple of our students and juniors. So next Tuesday, we have a bounce house coming, uh, Mr. Softy, Kona Ice, and Debo's. He's selling chicken strips. All those items can be purchased. And then we're also doing tons of activities on the field, like kickball, um, just tons of stuff. Our art crew is doing face paint and stuff, just a kick off the end of the year. So we're not just sitting watching movies in class. So <laughs> the teachers playing that as well with us. So that should be fun. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And on behalf of the board, I hope you enjoyed your year this year as ambassadors. And thank you for your service to your school. We appreciate that. And thanks for filling in when we weren't available <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> you did a great job. Yeah. Mr. Clev President Clevenger, we have something for them, if that's okay. We, d we have the we district do. highlights now. We have something. Oh, they have gifts no, no. for the student ambassadors. Oh. So we will go ahead, at, um, since we've been prompted, to go ahead and recognize our student ambassadors. Um, two of them were n are unable to attend this evening. They are our two seniors. Um, so I would like to share with everyone um, what their plans are after graduation. So Simone Abram, she will be attending Livingstone College. It's a private historically black Christian college in Salisbury, North Carolina. It's 43 miles from Charlotte, and she will be attending the, um, the college on a presidential academic scholarship. So we are very proud of Simone. <laughs> a memorable moment for her was signing day. She appreciated the recognition from her peers, her family, and school staff. She is very excited for college and to also play softball at the collegiate level where she'll go from being a MacArthur Lady General to a Livingstone College Blue Bear. So we wish Simone the best of luck. She is actually playing softball right now in, oh, she told me, I can't remember it's if Taylor it's regional, regionals or sectionals. Okay, regionals. regionals. So that is why she is not here this evening. So let's give Simone a wonderful recognition applause for her accomplishments. Our next senior ambassador is Jamie Keck. She's been an active, or has been active in our ag program, holding officer seats since her sophomore year when she was a historian. Junior year, she held a uh, parliamentarian seat 
and this past year she served as the vice president of the FFA chapter at MacArthur. Jamie plans to attend Iowa State University to study animal science and then to attend a vet, a vet school to earn her doctorate of veterinary medicine to become a veterinarian. Yes, so very good things happening from our students. One of her fondest memories of high school at DPS was freshman year during homecoming week when her and her friends got together and tie-dyed green shirts to represent their freshmen in the school and wore them to show the school spirit leading up to homecoming. So let's give Miss Jamie Keck a round of applause. And then the two ambassadors um, th that will be graduating next year here this evening are our Eisenhower um, ambassadors, Miss Sydney Walker and Azarian Perry. They also served as grand marshals for Eisenhower's graduation, if they look familiar. I also um, want to give them a token of appreciation tonight. I know they are very involved students and student athletes. And so, and I do believe they even try to hold a job in their spare time so but they are well respected within their student bodies and we wanted to recognize that they are busy and may not be available to join us all at all board meetings but administration would like to acknowledge them this evening for always being a, an ambassador of DPS so Dr. Clark would like to present you guys with a little token of appreciation and then I'm going to take a picture of you three so come on up Anyone else wants to send them any wishes? Feel free to do so at this time. Good. Okay, moving on. Um, so at the last board meeting, we learned about the young authors at Hope Academy. Thank you, Dr. Collins Brown, for sharing this story. So I'd like to play a highlight video about Mrs. Pomeran, second grade classroom teacher at Hope Academy, and the book that her students co-authored. I actually just came across it on my Facebook feed one night at home and it said it was a free kit from Student Treasures and so I signed up for it and it arrived within a week. I told them we are going to write a classroom book. I don't think they believed me it would be a real actual book um, and I said you guys get to choose the topic. So we had probably eight to ten ideas that they came up with for a topic. They discussed it um, as groups. Then we wrote it on post-it notes. Um, we put the post-it notes around the room. And I said, okay, if you chose, um, I wanna write about my favorite person, go stand here. If you want superpowers, stand here, um, and so on. And so we did it two, three times until we got down to the one that they all chose, which was the superpowers. If I had superpowers, I would have the power to speed run. I could run to save people, to fight bad guys. Well, don't use that for teleportation so I can um, teleport way back then. If people fell off a mountain, I can teleport to them to save them. And so a huge part of the buy-in was them choosing what they're writing about. I didn't make them write about something I wanted. It was they chose it and came up with it. If I had superpowers, I would be invisible. I c could fight bad guys. I have superpowers to grow roses. To grow roses? Why do you want to grow roses? Because I love roses. So I have a flyer or a like a code number. If they want to buy it, I can absolutely send it out to them. It's um, depending on what type of book you want. So we have hardcover and softcover. Um, it's through student treasures publishing. And one more thing I want to mention while we're talking about that. I really, really want to thank community members and staff and my family and friends who donated so that every student in the room could get their own copy. If I have a superpower, would be able to breathe underwater. If people is drowning, I would be able to save them. Like stuff happens in like glass in the fall or someone, or like someone can fall on their back or trip or something. Then you can just like go save them. The fact that in second grade, they can say, I wrote and published a real book. People bought it. Um, community members have seen it. Important people in the bu building have seen it. Um, they just, it's a huge deal to them, and it really 
creates that excitement that hopefully they'll keep forever. It was very um, nice to hear that many of our second graders want to help or serve or and do well for others. So it, that was kind of neat to see. So thank you again um, to the Hope Academy Second Grade Classroom for for doing that wonderful um, wonderful book. Our next highlight is um, the final school highlight for the year. It's Montessori Academy for Peace. Principal Nate Talent will share some of the highlights going on over at Montessori. Okay. Good evening, Board of Education, Dr. Clark, Ms. Bradford, community members and stakeholders. Um, let's talk about Montessori Academy for Peace. It's been a unique year and a kind of a different year. Uh, we started out the year with Mary Anderson as our principal. She retired in December. I took over as interim, um, and then Pam Helm has been there as the assistant the whole time, uh, and I'd be remiss to mention that none of this would happen or anything at the building without Ms. Helm. She has been fantastic. Um, and Mary Anderson also has been an integral part of forming this program and shaping it into what it is. Um, and Mary Anderson is one of our retirees this year. Um, I, was, I was told I could mention people's names in this, so um, I'm going to mention uh, Sharon Hunter was also one of our retirees, one of our assistants, um, Jim Powell, one of our custodians as well as Don Kistner and together they served 83 years to the students indicator and that is to me that is incredible that is a lot uh, is there a clicker how do I go to the next yes, one yes I'm sorry there's the little black this little thing note there. yeah and the green arrow got it Okay, so um, I put on here our mission and vision. I'm not going to read these to you necessarily, but um, I just want to tell you, like, most of what we do, actually everything of what we do um, at Montessori Academy of Peace is basically fostering students who will eventually become community members, people who will become our parents, become our teachers, become our principals. I'm actually one of those products as well. Um, everything we do is in the focus of Dr. Maria Montessori and what she does. Um, and I think that we have created an incredible entity, an incredible asset to Decatur Public Schools. We are one of the largest public Montessori schools on the planet. Um, and that's something that I think that, you know, is, is worth recognizing. Um, so I also added some pictures of students and things that are going on in our building. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that as we go forward. Next slide, I've added some data that we have for our building. So we have an enrollment of 684 students. Last year, we our summative designation was commendable. Um, I put some demographic data up there for you to see as well. But the point, the part that I really want to point out is the in the bottom corner there, it says infractions by offenses or referrals. Um, when teachers turn in referrals, it either becomes an offense or a referral. Um, if it's an offense, it comes to the office, it means that we handle it in the office and we deal with consequences there. If it's a referral, it's still documented as a behavior or something that occurred in the classroom, but it's handled by the teachers. And I felt like that was worth mentioning because if you notice, a little over a quarter of all of our things that happen in classrooms, behavior issues, they're handled by my teachers in their classrooms to keep students in their communities, to keep them involved in the students that, and things that are going on in their classroom. And I feel like that is, that is incredible, that my teachers are dedicating their time to keep their students in their classroom. And that, that was something I just wanted to mention there. I wanted to mention some of our community partners. I, this was a list that I worked hard at putting together, and I'm sure I'm missing lots of people in here. Um, but Girl Scouts, Lampstand, our church partner, um, 4-H has come in, done several things, Rotary Club, Richland Community College, Mill Millican University, Heartland Technical Academy, uh, Shelton Academics, um, Owen Raleigh and Cassie Schaefer of the Super Screen Bros um, Lego League team. They came and actually did a presentation for my staff to try to get Lego League more um, involved at the, at the K-8 buildings, and so uh, we're hoping to get a, a good team going, hoping to pair with them. Northeast Community, community Fund, Growing Strong, Boy Scouts, uh, Think It on a Shirt, that's a small company that's done some shirts for us, um, DPS Foundation and Ridiculous, and I'm sure I'm missing tons more community partners. Uh, we have an incredible community here that supports Decatur Public Schools, and Montessori Academy for Peace is not left out of that by any means at all. We have, this year we've had some incredible student accomplishments. Um, a lot of them occurred in sports. Uh, you had a lot of our teams here. Our eighth grade boys went to state, our seventh grade girls basketball and volleyball were both regional champs. We were champions of the math bowl competition this year. We had a student advance to the regional spelling bee. Um, our high school, high school musical was our musical this year. We sold two sold out shows. 
Um, we had a student qualify for state and track. Our middle school orchestra placed first place in the Missouri competition. And uh, we have several students taking high school math from our middle school. And there are probably many more things that I didn't even mention or don't have on there. Um, but I wanted to make sure to point out some of the incredible things that our students are doing. We've had some great school events this year. Uh, book fair, of course, happens twice a year, but that always has a great turnout. Um, our PTO, or our booster club, the Hive is what they call themselves, put, put on several events. Uh, Crafts with Coco, you'll see that kind of in the middle picture there, where we had tons of teachers, tons of parents, tons of students come in, um, volunteers, and put together different crafts and whatnot around the holidays. Um, a Gourd Gala, which was like our um, kind of fall festival that we had. That's that one up there in the corner. Uh, our musical, of course, that I mentioned, various fundraisers and drives, and tomorrow they're actually hosting a zoo night at the zoo. So uh, if I have any people from my building watching, please bring your children out. Remember, every child has to be accompanied by an adult. Um, and I didn't mention this on there, but up there in the corner, uh, the long picture there, that is our Little Bees cheerleading camp. Um, and they had an incredible amount of students come out all the way, I believe, from third grade all the way up to about sixth grade, might have even done second grade as well, but they filled up the entire gym and did a little cheer for everybody. And they uh, filled up our stands to capacity, possibly over capacity, but uh, it, was a, it was a great turnout. The, the last two slides that I have, I've gone kind of quick here, are just some pictures of students in this one. Um, students is what we, that's, what, that's our focus. That is everything that we do in Decatur Public Schools, everything that we do at Montessori Academy for Peace. Um, and so I've got some incredible things that we have going on here. If you notice, um, our, our students get involved not only in things in the classroom, but also things in the school. There in the middle, I've got one of our students helping to serve lunch. We try to involve them in every aspect of the building. Um, and so I just, I just wanted to point out some of the incredible things that students are doing and things that they're working on in class. The last slide, though, um, I felt like this was my most important. Uh, one of the biggest assets of Montessori Academy for Peace, while our Montessori curriculum is incredible, it's great for building individual students, it's great for designing human beings for life, um, none of that would happen without my staff. And I'm talking about every single member of my staff. Um, and I included some pictures here of staff members who you wouldn't maybe necessarily see um, my teachers do an incredible job. I, I could not do anything that I do. Our students could not be as successful as they are without the, the teachers. But uh, in the top there, you have a bunch of tables covered with tablecloths. And there you have my library TA. She put up what was called a book tasting, where she found something on Pinterest and set up these beautiful tables with books for students to come. And she did this for, I think, a couple weeks where students could come. They would rotate around, try out books, and see different things that they might want to check out. It was just a different way to kind of introduce books. And she came up with that all on her own. Um, in the bottom corner there, you'll see a big sign with a bunch of hands. Um, we have, we house the deaf program at my building, and this has been an incredible piece to the Montessori Academy for Peace program, um, something that has involved our students in aspects of life or aspects of the community that they don't normally see. Um, and this is one of my TAs actually from that program. One of our deaf students was part of our basketball team and she brought a sign. They wouldn't let her hold it up, unfortunately, but um, it says bees in sign language. And uh, you know, we've worked to try to integrate um, clapping uh, silently for most of our events to help include them. So we've done a lot with trying to include every aspect of our students, not just our Montessori students. In the bottom there you'll see a couple students painting. They actually do that painting with our custodian who is actually an incredible painter. So not only are my teachers involved in my building, but every single adult and human being in my building is there for students and they go above and beyond to just exemplify everything that the students do. Um, and that is all I have for you today. I just wanted to make sure to mention that, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions for me? Great. Thank I'll leave you. Thank you. All right, our final highlight. Sorry, Bill. I oh, saw okay. you starting to talk. I had one more I wanted to add. So we want to publicly recognize an amazing event hosted by Dr. Sherrard with Simp Inc. and Macon County Law Enforcement. Students from DPS were rewarded with a day at the Devon um, to celebrate because we are proud of you, Youth Empowerment Day. The day was spent with food, concerts, snacks, races. There was a PlayStation gaming truck, inflatable foosball, 
jumbo volleyball and connect four and cornhole and i'm sure i'm missing a few other fun activities but nearly 1800 students and 200 adults from simp inc's vip team school administrators law enforcement officers first responders and community leaders helped make the day very special for our students it was the first ever youth concert held at the devon and man was it jamming the michael jackson and bruno mars jam band had everyone moving whether they could keep a rhythm or not it was really fun to see all the students just enjoy the music and entertainment it truly was an absolutely great event so we wanted to recognize our community because they are always ready to support and recognize the good choices our students are making that continue to make us cps proud so once again thank you to dr sherrard her team macon county law enforcement for hosting Youth Empowerment Day. It was beautiful to come together as a community to celebrate our youth. And those are just some of the the photos that um, I was able to snag maybe illegally off Facebook. But <laughs> um, anyway, enjoy the photos. I think I saw Sydney there, AZ. I'm not sure if you were there, but I think it was a wonderful day for everyone. So It really was. And they were having so much fun. When I it's hard to even explain you had to be there it was so many activities so much food yes um the kids are dancing to the different uh, music that was being played making up their own dances they played this human what you call it baseball oh, right Foosball. there ball oh, well. yes <laughs> and it was um, it was so funny because they were actually the the, the pins moving <laughs> forward um, they did this one where you had to go through a maze, climb up, slide down, and then we still don't know what this one game was with the brooms, but they were having a lot of fun. So it was like, stimulation overload, a lot to do. The kids <laughs> were laughing, having a good time, and yeah. it was just a, a wonderful time. It, it was. It was just like watching Christmas. Mm -hmm. It really was. So kudos to everybody, and I applaud the kids. They were amazing. Yes. Mr. Clevenger, that's a wrap on District Thank Highlights. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Isn't it nice to see our lo units of local government working together for the betterment of our community? Uh, it's exciting to see this and in that venue as well. We'll now move on to public participation. The Board of Education would like to note the following during public participation. Identify oneself and be brief. Comments should be limited to three minutes. Any public comments submitted to the Board Secretary will be included in our record. Please note that during the Board of Education meeting and public, public participation, board members do not respond or comment to public comments. All comments are referred to administration. Furthermore, the board refrains from referring to specific students or staff members by name and requests public commenters refrain from doing so as well. The request that you omit names is made to protect you from allegations of libel or slander or from violation of the, of the Illinois School Student Records Act. It is not intended to shield an employee from criticism. Ms. Bradford, do we have any presenters tonight? Yes, we have Sarah Van Kirkley. Good evening. Last time I was here, I spoke to you about playgrounds, which is an issue that I am passionate about, and I'm here to speak about again. <clears throat> As most of us know, the Alternative Ed program is supposed to be a temporary placement for students who attend Garfield Learning Academy, uh, and most of them are there in hopes of correcting disruptive behavior. There is no parent-teacher organization with the resources to raise fund. Uh, it's also my understanding that while there is growing enrollment, there has been no changes or increases to the budget for this program. So we keep adding students, but we're not adding dollars, if you will. Uh, while new playground equipment was being installed at schools with existing playgrounds, there appeared to be no pla plans for any playground at Garfield, not even to repurpose equipment. The only work planned for Garfield was the installation of a secured vestibule, and that has still not been done. But Muffley and South Shores did get more playground equipment installed, I noticed. 
Garfield still has its vibrant entryway from when it was a magnet school. Of the K through eight schools, Indicator Public, uh, District 61, 93% have playground access on and or adjacent to campus, meaning there are several doubled play, sta uh, play spaces in the district. Garfield's resolute faculty and staff are relying on card or board games in the classroom and a whole lot of creativity. As some hope for gym access during recess or request extra PE time to try to squeeze recess into an already chaotic day full of behavior challenges, which I shouldn't have to tell any of you are probably because we have some parents who are hesitant to seek mental health help, who are hesitant to accept the stigma which comes with the labels. So the results are children who don't have a playground to play on. These children are being punished largely because they have not been allowed to access the mental health care that they desperately need. Shame on us. Shame on us as a district. These children deserve better than that. We are better than that. Given the number of new playgrounds installed in the past year, there are several parents at Garfield who think it's only fair they also get a new playground. The story behind that is that there's a playground for Garfield, but it just hasn't been installed. Why? It wouldn't have disrupted the end of the school year operations. It's not like there are children playing outside there in the wide open empty space. Providing K-8 students in every other school district a playground is just wrong. It's discriminatory at best and shameful. Shame on us. We can do better than this. Also, please respectfully reconsider the transfers of Mr. West and Mr. Jordan. Thank you. Do we have any other comments? No, we do not. The board appreciates your comments, and those comments will be referred to our administrative staff. Move on to board discussion. Is there, are there any comments from board members or items the board wishes to discuss? Yeah, I, I would like to us uh, as a board to return from many years ago to having committee reports that from the committees that board members serve on. Um, one committee that I'm on just met recently, it's the Appraisal Action Committee, which when I was assigned to it, I had no idea what that meant. And I've learned a whole lot about it. So I just wanna share with you real quick what the committee is kind of about. Um, it's mostly about evaluation of teachers, what, how to handle that. Um, and one of the ways they're evaluated is by t um, tests of students. And there are three types of tests ranging from a national standardized test to tests that teachers create on their own. And the middle is kind of a common test among different teachers in the district. And right now the committee then is gonna be focusing mostly on what a tests are available and what a tests are most appropriate based on the grade level uh, or the content matter. So that's kind of what the committee is all about. Um, one other committee I would like to hear from at the next board meeting is the finance committee regarding solar panels. We had a presentation, I, was on, I wasn't on the finance committee, but I was visiting uh, last November and there was a presentation from a company that um, does work with uh, school districts and many other um, nonprofit organizations on installing solar panels at no cost to the district. The district saves some of the utility money um, and it also gets something that they can show their students that is being done in a science way. Um, so I think it's a win-win-win. And we've had other presentations I've heard, so I hope at the next board meeting we have a report on where we're at with solar panels because this is already six months past and, and we have lost out on six months of starting to make some progress in that area, which the Park District and the City of Decatur have started doing. So I wish our school district would start getting into that. Thank you. Anyone, Will? Um, yes, I, I just have uh, two quick points. Uh, the first is more for precedent or conversation for this board, when we welcome students and when we wor welcome students and their parents to come to speak it, to us and be honored, I think that it would be prudent for us to get up and shake their hands and welcome them here. This might be the only meeting that they have the opportunity to come here. And if we truly want to honor them and honor their achievement, because that's how many, uh, how often students come here, that, that we do that as a board. So I, I, would, I would put that forth. Um, 
we'll, we'll take that under consideration. Okay. And then secondly, um, I, I understand that uh, being relatively new, um, I, I have seen training scheduled for things under IASB, the Illinois Association of School Boards. I was wondering when there will be an internal policy training for our policy book. Well, the, the general policy training will come from the School Boards Association. And Dr. Clark, you can help me here a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we probably need to consider a new, new board member orientation uh, as well after the, the training. I would also propose that later on in the summer, maybe right before school, that we bring in um, not only the Illinois Association or the, yeah, the School Boards Association, uh, but also possibly someone like Bruce Nims who does a wonderful job with board training uh, to help us along and, and give us a little more guidance in that area as well. Uh, governance is something that I don't think we can get enough training on and I think it'll help all of us function better as a team and I think that's the objective of everybody sitting in this room is to function better as a team and and be a team that leads this district uh, for, for, the, for the foreseeable future and becomes a good teammate with Dr. Clark. And uh, just to go along with that, so basically after you have your uh, training, mm -hmm. then DOT will sit down with a board and do some, like, follow-up. So you'll know who we are, what we do in each department, right. which we will have someone that oversees our policies and can give you a brief update of where we are. Yeah, and, and my only concern is because, you know, we're asked to do things like ex expel students and act on board policy and not understanding that mm -hmm. uh, coming into it does not put me in a great position. Uh, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Anyone else? Okay, hearing none. Uh, we'll now move on to our consent items. Does anyone want to pull any con individual consent items? Uh, yes, Mr. Clevenger, I'd like to pull A, minutes open closed meetings. Anyone else? Dr. Clark. I recommend the Board of Education approve the consent items as presented, which includes B, financial conditions report, C, treasurer's report, D, Illinois Association of School Boards, ISB, 2023-2024 membership dues. Okay, now we go back to... Ask for a motion and second. Okay. Do I hear a motion? No moved. Second? Second. Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Mr. Clevenger? Aye. Mr. Dion? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Wetzel? Aye. Mr. Scheider? Aye. And Ms. Banks? Aye. Seven I, zero nay. Motion carried. I recommend the Board of Education approve the consent item as presented, which include A, minutes, open slash closed meetings, May 9th, 2023. So moved. Second. Yes. Discussion now? The only reason I pulled this is I was not at the uh, May 9th meeting, and I will be abstaining because I cannot say what or di did or did not happen at that meeting. Okay. Noted. Ms. Bradford, you call the roll? Yes. Mr. Clevenger? Aye. Mr. Dion? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Wetzel? Abstain. Mr. Scheider? Aye. And Ms. Banks? Aye. Six aye, zero nay, one abstain. Okay, we now move on to roll call action items. Dr. Clark. You have to read the... Oh, wait a minute here. Oh, here we go. For the record, roll call item C. Possible discipline and or dismissal of Schedule B employee and D. Possible dis discipline or dismissal of Schedule B employee were pulled from the May 23rd, 2023 open session board agenda and will be addressed at a future meeting. Do we have a recommendation for a possible suspension without pay or other disciplinary action of a custodial employee? Yes, I recommend the Board of Education approve the three-day suspension without pay and a one-day suspension without pay for Stephen Collins, a custodial employee, effective May 24, 2023, May 25, 2023, May 26, 2023, and May 30, 2023, as presented. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Ms. Bradford. Mr. Dion. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. 
Mr. Clevenger. Aye. Dr. Collins Brown. I guess we're not going to discuss it because you didn't ask oh, the yeah, discussion. Sure, I did. just wanted to say <laughs> as the discussion that the dates picked, we didn't pick May 29th, just as for the record, because that is a holiday. Just Thank you for, for clarifying. Yeah. That's the only thing I was going to say. But otherwise, I'll vote yes. <laughs> Mr. Scheider. Aye. Ms. Banks. Aye. And Mr. Wetzel. Aye. Seven I zero nay. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation for a possible suspension without pay or other disciplinary action of a teaching assistant? Yes. I recommend the Board of Education approve the four-day suspension without pay for Laura McQuality, a teaching assistant, effective May 24, 2023, May 25, 2023, May 26, 2003, and May 30, 2003, as presented. I'm sorry, and you're saying 2003 is 2023. 2023. My apologies. And as Dr. Kevin Collins-Brown stated, May 29th is a holiday. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 <laughs> Discussion. I just want to go on record of saying I do support administration's decision on this. I will be voting no just because I think the severity of the offense deserves more time off. But this suspension I do actually support. But I just wanted to clarify why I'll be voting no. Thank you. Ms. Bradford. Mr. Wetzel. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Clevenger. Aye. Ms. Banks. Aye. Mr. Dion. Aye. Mr. Scheider. Aye. And Dr. Collins Brown. No. Five aye, two nay. Motion carried. Do we have a recommendation to rescind the vote for an assistant principal transfer from Hope Academy to Montessori Academy for Peace? Yes, there is a request from two board members to rescind the vote for assistant principals Ben West transfer from Hope Academy to Montessori Academy for Peace that was approved during the May 9, 2023 Board of Education meeting as presented. For clarification for the Board of Education, if you vote no to rescind this vote, this means you want the approval from the May 9, 2023 board meeting to remain the same. If you vote yes to rescind this vote, that means you want a re-vote on this item separately by proceeding with letter F under the roll call action items after this vote. Does everybody understand? Are there any additional questions from board members here before we move forward on this one? This one's a little little different than some of the others, but are pretty straightforward. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. A second? second. Ms. Bradford. Mr. Clevenger? No. Ms. Banks? No. Dr. Collins Brown? Yes, I vote to rescind the vote. Mr. Wetzel? Was there no discussion? Sorry, let's back up and have discussion. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> discussion. Um, having not been part of this first part of this conversation, I cannot in good faith uh, vote either yes or no for this. Uh, I will be abstaining as this is a carryover of the May 9th meeting. Even though I've watched it, I still, don't, I still have s several questions that I don't believe that I can get answered in the next 10 to 15 minutes. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. I am in my few years of education I've never seen such a strong support for staff for an administrator that they would like to keep um, working with them um, it's not just a couple people um, I, we received three emails we've had three people speak to us last time um, they spoke in a very reasonable fashion uh, they didn't get you know overly emotional they gave all very good reasons and the person that we're talking about that would be moved has also said he would like to stay working with them. Um, this is a school that we have talked about, needs more support than almost any other school in the district. It struggles with retention. And when you have a significant um, number of staff who work with that assistant principal, you know, practically begging us to keep them to working with them. They feel they've got a really strong K-2 uh, program really progressing in a school that has struggled. Um, I don't see how we can ignore their pleas uh, for help. 
Um, and what we're talking about is not just their help, but the students. So if we're, we're voting to ignore what they're saying, we're also ignoring trying to help these students in K-2 at Hope Academy. I strongly urge you to change your votes if you've already voted to at least um, give us a chance to look at this more. Um, like I said, I, I just have never seen anything so strong um, that we need to really look at in terms of helping this uh, part of this school in the best way we can. So, and to kind of piggyback on that, just Will and Mark, I know you both weren't here, and I know Jason wasn't, but you, all you guys are kind of aware. That particular person, Ben West, did reach out to me personally prior to the meeting last week, begging not to be moved, um, as did several teachers, as Al said. Um, and so that's why we had asked to rescind this. Um, so we are hoping that um, knowing that bit of information and what Alice said and with the public plea, um, as Ms. Van Kirkley even said tonight towards him, we're just hoping that we can at least rescind this and talk about it again. So, so real quick, I haven't voted. Um, this person is moving to the other school because they accepted the job offer, right? That is correct. He was given three opportunities to say yes or nay, he was he was okay with this move. He said this three times. And then it would be, I mean, obviously safe to assume that they said yes three times that they didn't want to move. Yes, and they would HR three different times. Yeah. It's one thing to say yes to administrators who are going to be your supervisor someday, and another thing to say yes to other people now, involved with the staff that they would be working with. So I think, I think it's important to be aware if, if he, let us know during the board meeting last time uh, that became pretty clear that he wanted to stay working with those teachers. Actually, I would have to disagree respectfully because after that board meeting, he again said yes. And I don't really want to change my vote only because of the constant miscommunication. Um, I feel that if, you know, like you said, he had every opportunity to voice his case. And at this point, it's like, this is an administrative decision, so if administration feels that this is the best decision, I'm with it as well. But there's just been too much back and forth. Mm -hmm. and So with this person getting a job offer and subsequently accepting it and confirming it three times, did they apply for the job? They did not. The way this became um, available when we had all of the moves that unfolded, we knew that he was interested in Montessori, right. so we brought this to his attention at that time. Okay, so at that time he could have said, mm -hmm. nah, okay, okay. Man, it's, it's hard. <laughs> well, I think I, anyway, I have I'm a little different perspective. When, you, when, a, when a CEO or our school superintendent starts to put together a team, uh, there are skilled people in every position on that team. And I think as our school superintendent, um, she is charged with putting together a team that's going to lead this district for years to come. And if she feels like a person is stronger or is going to be a better piece of that puzzle in another opportunity for them or another location, then sometimes we have to move people where, the org where they fit in that big overall district puzzle rather than taking each case individually by when we start dealing with each individual case then all of a sudden we're really getting into the weeds of the organization and that's what we have Dr. Clark for is to lead this organization forward put her team together in a strategic in a strategic manner that will lead our district well into the future right person right place right time Dr. Clark absolutely except she lastly. works for us so if and we, she's our only employee right and so if we question that we have the right to question that so I'm just asking if we could maybe table this and maybe invite that employee to maybe the next board meeting. We could all talk to him and... I would adamantly or? be opposed to inviting an employee to make a presentation at a board meeting. About what job they want? No, no to get clarification about whether or not he actually wants to move or not. Well, as we, as we create an organizational hierarchy for any organization, uh, there's a process that we go through to create that hierarchy and there's a process that we follow and this case has not followed that process by any stretch of the imagination 
And I also think it was largely inappropriate to call board members, you know, during the board meeting to do that. I don't think that was this was the appropriate place um, for him to voice those concerns. Mm -hmm. Well, then it's inappropriate that people reach out to us all day, day and night that they do. So, I mean, you, I you yourself have admitted that. that people have called you, Alana. So if it's inappropriate that someone calls me, then it's inappropriate that someone calls you. Mm -hmm. so, but I don't hear I you that saying we've that. We've all seen the board packet. You know, we've all known that this was coming before it was coming. So if he saw that his name was on this packet and he had issues, he should have called us then. Did somebody get a phone call during a meeting? No, I got the phone call before the meeting last Tuesday. Okay. In regards to what a CEO is being questioned about, what they do, this is not something that has hardly ever happened. Um, we pass personnel um, hirings every month, month after month. I think this is about the first time this has ever been questioned. Um, so it's not like this hardly ever happens. But like I said, when you have uh, almost the entire staff of a group of people working with someone begging us to reconsider I think that should be taken into consideration. I think in general, our district needs to listen to our staff a little bit well, more. We can't have the tail wagging the dog. I'm not saying, I just said once out of two years. Um, I don't think this is a very common thing, but this is an exceptional case um, and an exceptional situation. And I, I think we should listen to our staff. Um, I think our staff need to be heard in this school district as much as possible. I think when you look at the conversations that took place with HR, uh, there's a very different view here than of the staff calling and requesting that he stay there. So there's very divergent mm -hmm. opinion there uh, in these various conversations that have taken place. And I think Dr. Clark has weighed all that in making a decision to move an individual from one part of the organization to another part where she wants to utilize that person's skills better in that area. So I, I would um, respectfully ask that we go ahead and continue this vote. Yeah, and, and, and to say that we're not going to, we're not supporting staff by not letting them choose who goes to what position, I think that that's, uh, the two aren't connected. You can support without, you know, giving free reign to the, <clears throat> to the district, you know. <laughs> Um, so yes, I do support staff. I do support administrative staff and teaching teaching staff. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is there is a process for hiring and transfers, and I think that um, moving forward, like we normally do, is the proper thing to do. Um, it, if we don't, when does it stop? How many <clears throat> how many more hiring decisions or? Uh, transfers are we going to get involved in are we going to start micromanaging and saying i want you to move this person here and this person there and you know hire this person i mean i but that's, that's not my, what we're saying I, I know that's not what we're saying but the thing is each little step that we take to undermine dr clark's authority is a little step closer to micromanaging the entire district from these seven seats and I wouldn't call it undermining her authority when well it is especially had, whenever we talk to her a lot like she's of public like, feedback asking us to not have him move that's not undermining authority that's just listening to the stakeholders no i get that um but for, to put the, the vote on hold well this would be a second time um i think that is undermining well, that's your opinion jason and i respect that that's fine yeah and and that's another thing too is we do need to make sure that we're saying things respectfully especially to our one employee i think there's an analogy to what you just said to zero tolerance um where it was zero tolerance, which was a big thing in the United States for a long time, um, all discipline was handled the same um, so that it didn't matter the individual situation. And I think we've gotten away from that. And I think that's what we're asking for is to look at this as a very exceptional situation that is not common um, to make a decision based on information, not just on an overall policy of having no changes. Mm -hmm. I get what you say, but I, I don't know if I'm catching the connection between zero tolerance and what I said. But In zero tolerance, the administration doesn't really have to think about it. They just automatically you know, punish people because they got involved in something. And they don't look at the individual situation, like in a fight, whether one person started it or something like that. 
um, when you get away from that, you do look at the individual situation, which we're asking us to do here, is to look at this unique individual situation um, to help this school, to help that set of staff as much as possible, to help their students. I think what you're talking about is one school, one, one site. Dr. Clark looks at all the sites in the district, all the employees in the district, and how all of our employees, staff, and everybody that works in District 61, how they all fit into the big picture to make District 61 function better. And this obviously is one of those cases in Dr. Clark's mind that's going to be more helpful to the, to the greater good than it is in a singularly focused area. Yeah, because one thing we need to consider, too, is whoever goes into the position, they need to be Montessori trained, right? That is correct. And do we have other people that are being beaten down the door to get into a Montessori trained position? No one that has been trained in Montessori. So, I mean, that that's something that needs to factor into it, too. Um, I mean, it, it's easier to hire somebody for HOPE than it is for MAP because of that training requirement. I think that's that speaks exactly to the pieces in the puzzle. There you go. Except that hope has the highest rate of turnover and the most vacancies, I believe. So it's not going to be as easy to hire someone for hope as you're making it sound. Uh, it may not. Uh, agreed. The point being, though, that the pieces in the puzzle and the pieces in the overall puzzle. This is the classic case of that. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Now, Ms. Bradford. Okay, just to clarify, there is a motion and a second on the floor. It was motioned by Dr. Collins Brown, seconded by Mr. Reynolds. And again, if you vote no to rescind the vote, that means that the approval remains the same from the May 9th meeting. If you vote yes to rescind the vote, we will vote on that individual separately. Mr. Clevenger, you voted no. Does your vote remain the same? Remains the same. Ms. Banks, you voted no. Does your vote remain the same? It remains the same. Dr. Collins Brown, you voted yes. Does your vote remain the same? Yes, it remains the same. Mr. Wetzel, you abstained. Does that remain the same? Yes. Mr. Scheider? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? No. And Mr. Dion? No. I have four no, one yes, I'm sorry, two yes, and one abstain. Motion carried. No, I'm sorry. Motion <laughs> went down. <laughs> my fault. Motion did not carry. Let me be clear. Okay. So you will okay. now. I move over to. You're going to. Which one am I going to go to? This one right here, right? Roll call letter F, transfer an assistant principal from Hope Academy no, to Mon. No, that's not, that's no. not needed, no. He's That's not really needed at this point in time. He has to. Oh, I'm yeah, pulling letter F because it's an action item. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, from Hope Academy, Montessori Academy for Peace has been pulled from the May 23rd, 2023 open session board meeting agenda. Yep. Thank you. Letter now, G. Oh, we go to G. Yeah. Do we have a recommendation for the personnel action items? Yes, I recommend the Board of Education approve the personnel action items listed in the memo from Jason Fox, Director of Human Resources and the Human Resources Department as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Bradford. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Scheider? Aye. Mr. Clevenger? Aye. Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Mr. Wetzel, aye. Mr. Dion, aye. and Ms. Banks, aye. seven aye, zero nay. Motion carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have a recommendation for the professional development achieving excellence in leadership conference for our school leaders? Yes, I recommend the Board of Education approve the professional development achieving excellence in leadership conference for school leaders as presented. Do you hear a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Discussion. Um, I will be voting no because I asked for information that I've not received. Um, 
about, we got some information, but not the overall look at Title II funds, the budget for the year, how professional development money has been spent this year, how it fits into the whole picture. Um, I'm also remembering that we had a consultant firm that we paid for uh, administrators to get extra training. Um, so are we doing that as well as these workshops? I don't see what other options are being discussed. Um, there's just a whole lot of missing information, so I'll be voting no on both both of these workshop presentations. Because also because we're talking about over one hundred fifty thousand dollars for these two workshops. Um, Mr. Scheider, you sent an um, information requested information. That information was sent to you per the information. You're but requested. it wasn't the information I asked for totally. It was some information, but not the, what I just mentioned was not included. So I included what you gave me. I'm I asked just specifically for budget. I wrote in the email specifically expenditure, major expenditures and revenue for Title II funds. And I got what, none of that. And I responded in that email to you. And what did I say? I said that you gave, uh, I gave details you the, about the workshops. I gave you all the information you requested, and I said I will work with the business office to get you that other information. But that part of that information, if you would have said tied to this agenda item, I would have tried to get it a much faster. But it takes a lot of time to get what you're asking for. Let's, uh, well, either way, Dr. I didn't Curry get just it. stepped up to help. Yeah, out if I may to clear this up a little bit, I have that stuff on my desk right now. I uh, had it with your treasurer's report that I thought you were going to come by and pick up both of those at the same time. So that would be on us for not emailing it to you. So it's upstairs right now. So, so I just need to be clear mm -hmm. in that email. Thank you for that. You're I welcome. said if it was anything they needed to contact you personally, and no one did. We had a request from Mr. Scheider, but he did not come to get it. Correct. Okay. I was not told it was available. <laughs> How can I come get something so, if I'm not told it's available? <laughs> I specifically said, my apologies. Ms. I mean, I can go back and read no, what I said. No, just. I'm just. You're not listening to me. I, I'm I saying I did not receive you. it, period. I am listening to you. I'll let you continue, I think President. We need, I think we need to go ahead with discussion here. I'm all for it. I think it sounds great. I'm excited for it. Our teachers are excited for it. I was told that hotels and flights and travel accommodations have already been booked. So I'm ready to vote on it. And to be clear, it's title funds. It is. Title two. Yeah. It's administrators. Administrators. It was, it's for all administrators. And, that's and yes, it is yeah. through uh, rollover carry funds, yes. Yep. So it's like a no-brainer. This is that coming out of our budget right and it's coming out of the grant funds yes will this be coming out of fiscal year 23 or 24 mike <laughs> you can just say it. <laughs> 23 okay what happens if we don't spend them can you come to the mic because the listening audience cannot hear you thank you this fiscal year so grants are on a different fiscal year oh, than okay. like the regular budget okay so our fiscal year ends august 31st and these are the carryover funds that if we don't spend it the money has to be sent back to the state okay so we could go on the route of trying to find somebody and send a bunch of money back or use it right for and conference. the state has we've had a lot of carryover funds and we didn't get the money until it's not like something that we've known that was going to come it was something that we got um, around january and then trying to see where the needs are and this was the direction that yep. was given to us is it money that comes from the federal government through the state and then the state sends it to us is that yes. how it works okay that's what i thought yeah yeah so i think that makes it a little more comfortable right I think it's also an op it's an opportunity for our staff to attend a training at Harvard, and let's let's stress Harvard University. Um, I, I think these at least one of these trainings that we're going to talk about is an opportunity for our staff to engage with urban directors from all across the United States and build these relationships with other organizations that they can share information with, share best practices with and as as such gives our district the benefit of something that may have been tried someplace else 
may have worked or may not have worked. And I, I think it's a good opportunity for team building for our group as well. So uh, I'm supportive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. These were two different dates, though, right? From what I yeah. remember, it is. It's yeah. two it's separate the, ones, and it's different principals going to <laughs> different, it's a different ones. Group. Yes. So you have some principals and APs going to one, some principals and APs going to a different one. Okay. Do any of them are? Is, is there anyone going to both? Yes, there will be a few going to both. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay, there's a motion on the floor from Ms. And Banks a second. And a second from Mr. Wetzel. Ms. Bradford. Right. Uh, any more discussion? <coughs> Ms. Bradford. Mr. Wetzel? Yes. Ms. Banks? Aye. Dr. Collins Brown? Aye. Mr. Scheider? Nay. Mr. Clevenger? Aye. Mr. Dion? Aye. And Mr. Reynolds? Aye. Six aye, one nay. Motion carried. Okay, do we have a recommendation for the Professional Development National Institute for Urban School Leadership Conference for School Leaders? Dr. Clark. Yes, I recommend the Board of Education approve the Professional Development National Institute for Urban School Leadership Conference for School Leaders as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion. This kind of puts both of them together, but I'm assuming there will be some kind of a presentation brought to either us or someone when this is done yes because both our directors will take part in all of that okay that's a good idea miss bradford mr clevenger aye mr wetzel aye miss banks aye dr collins brown aye mr scheider nay mr reynolds aye and mr dion aye six aye one nay motion carried okay do we have a recommendation for the Renaissance Fast Bridge subscription one year renewal? Yes, I recommend the Board of Education approve the Renaissance Fast Bridge subscription one year renewal as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Can, so, can someone describe this assessment tool? What, what sure. <laughs> um, thank you, Mary. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Reynolds, I didn't hear your question. Would you describe this as what, what this assessment tool is, what it does, wh and where do we see the results? Okay, of it? so this is the assessment tool that we utilize um, to do our benchmark testing in reading, reading fluency, math, math fluency, as well as for social emotional growth. We have a SAPERS component to this as well. When we present our data to the district, it comes from FastBridge, that's the data. We also, within the classrooms, can use the data to identify small group and whole group differentiated needs for our students, and the intervention tools are part of this process. Thank you, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Well, are there, are there? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you're not You don't get away that quick. <laughs> Are there any alternatives? There are different alternatives like NWEA, NWEA MAP would probably be the one I would be most familiar with. However, FastBridge is the tool we have used in the district for the past five years that I have been here. I'm not 100% sure when it came into fruition and was utilized in the district. That would be the other tool. The NWEA map gives us the rankings, like national and district rankings. However, FastBridge provides us with intervention tools so we can differentiate okay. that instruction, okay. whereas the NWEA yeah. map doesn't do that. Okay. So I'm hearing mixed reports on FastBridge. So if we say no to this, then what? Do we have this NWEA? <laughs> we would. Up, I, I, or what do we have? We, well, then we also <laughs> lose all of the data consistency that we've had over the past six years as well we would so we won't be able to compare this year we can't we can't year compare this year to last year we can't compare why not you can't save that data well but it would be a completely different tool yeah. it could be assessing something completely different and do our um, wait now you lost me so if this is doing reading and reading fluency for example right. you wouldn't do another test that tests reading and reading fluency they could way, be right it could be different and the way that you interpret 
the results and what the results are actually telling okay. you. Do we utilize this for student growth as well? We do utilize this as student growth as well so because this aligns with our IAR. I, in theory, we can say if you score this in reading, this is what you'll get on the IAR. It aligns, and some of the other tools don't align to, to IAR like FastBridge does. Yeah. And IAR is the state. Yeah, the state. I'm sorry, Illinois Assessment for Readiness. <laughs> sorry. I had a quick comment. Um, I don't want to derail the conversation about the actual tool itself. My question is more about the quote. About the what? Quote. Okay. Uh, this is a, a 60 day quote that was issued on 320, 2023. It's now 522, 2023. Will there be any extra cost of not meeting that quote date? There should not be any extra cost. And if okay. it does, it will come back. Okay. Anything else? Now, thank you. <laughs> now, hold on. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Miss Bradford. Mr. Dion. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Mr. Clevenger. Aye. Dr. Collins Brown. Aye. Mr. Scheider. Aye. Ms. Banks. Aye. And Mr. Wetzel. Aye. Seven aye, zero nay. Motion carry. Thank you. Do we have a recommendation for the St. Mary's Hospital Athletic Trainer Services Agreement? Do I have a motion? Wait. <laughs> yes. I recommend the Board of Education approve the St. Mary's Hospital Athletic Trainer Services Agreement, Second Amendment, as presented. So moved. Well, wait a minute. I'm used to moving through these things quickly, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> now, do we have a motion? A motion and second. Second. Discussion. Yeah, just quick discussion. I'll abstain. I work for a competitor. Okay. Any other discussion? I guess I need to stay <laughs> too then, don't I? Because I work for the competitor. We don't have anybody left here. <laughs> right. So I will be abstaining. Miss Bradford. Miss Banks. Aye. Mr. Clevenger. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. Mr. Dion. Abstain. Mr. Scheider. Aye. Mr. Wetzel. Aye. And Dr. Collins Brown. Abstain. I have five aye, two abstain. Motion carried. Thank you. Do we have a recommendation for the resolution Heartland Vocational Regional Intergovernmental Agreement? Yes, I recommend the Board of Education adopt the resolution for the Heartland Vocational Region Intergovernmental, Intergovernmental Agreement as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Discussion. I guess I'm stuck on the word resolution. I didn't. S I don't know the original agreement or contracts so I didn't see anything different in this the difference is the organizational chart mm -hmm. the last page <laughs> I did see that no I mean I saw that chart but yes. I didn't know that was necessarily a new chart yes it, you didn't have one before okay <laughs> so that's the resolution <laughs> no it's the chart? part of the resolution now the chart is and so you're uh, just basically adopting the same formatting that you had before so it's the same agreement or format everything is but adding a chart so there's yes. not technically a resolution it is it is a resolution. So the, the organizational chart has been added. And so now you're looking at the resolution, which was the very last page. Mm -hmm. And I, I can only assume that you've read that part of it. But I have read all of it, yes. Okay, perfect. So basically just saying, do we still want to stay part of this cohort with them and allow our kids to go? And if that's the case, then you're voting for this. Okay. I, like I said, it was the resolution. Yes. I didn't see the original agreement 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah, I didn't either. I'm okay. <laughs> Any other discussion? Ms. Bradford. Mr. Scheider. Aye. Ms. Banks. Aye. Dr. Collins Brown. Aye. Mr. Wetzel. Aye. Mr. Dion. Aye. Mr. Reynolds. Aye. And Mr. Clevenger. Aye. Seven aye, zero nay. You'll find some important dates uh, listed in your materials. You can look on the agenda for those. Uh, we do pass condolences for Kay Green who passed away Sunday, May 14th, a retired elementary school from DPS 61. And probably the one important day that we should not miss mm -hmm. is May 30th. Okay. We can all highlight that one, the last day of school. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we'll all note that one. The next meeting, regularly scheduled meeting, will be Tuesday, June 13th uh, at the Kyle Administration Building, 6.30 p.m. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Second. 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 Third. <laughs> <laughs>
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, same cares. sign.